Hi, I'm Chris Badavarano, CIO with Finemark. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the second quarter in the investment markets. It was a very challenging quarter, um, much like the first quarter was, uh, but in fact worse. Uh, the benchmark U.S. equity index, the S&P 500, was down 16% for the quarter. Uh, this puts that index down uh, about 20% uh, year to date through, through the 30th of June. This marks the first time since 2009 that the index has registered two consecutive negative quarters, um, uh, again, since, since 2009. The bond market was not much better. Um, generally, we see bond market performance a lot better um, when, when equities are weak, and that was not the case uh, in the second quarter as it was in the first. For the second quarter, uh, the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Index was down 4.69%. Uh, in addition to the losses posted in the first quarter and last year, the index is in a drawdown of 11.7%, its worst drawdown since 1980. Alternatives, on the other hand, actually did rather well. Um, long short posted modest losses. Uh, managed futures did quite well, largely owning to short positions in bonds and rates, also long positions in energy and the U.S. dollar. Um, we really believe um, for the for the going forward period, there is a, a major regime shift at hand here, and we believe it's being driven by three major issues. The first one is this uh, post-COVID examination of supply lines. Uh, we believe that as a result of the supply shortages and challenges that we saw during, during COVID and after, that uh, countries, including the U.S. and others, will re-examine where they source goods and think about factors beyond price. In, in optimizing for those sources. Um, number two, we believe that the world is much more attuned today to the risks of energy supply and an overall growing uh, risk of geopolitical um, danger. And, and this all stems from the Russian decision to invade Ukraine in, in February and the resulting, uh, I'd say, galvanization that we've seen in, in the West, uh, particularly the U.S. And, and NATO allies as a result of this action. And then lastly, um, which we saw really formally end in March, was the, the, the Fed abandonment of, of its long-stated quantitative easing policy. This QE policy, which had its origins back in 2008 as a result of the financial crisis, and this was all in an effort to uh, reduce the longer term structure of rates by the U.S. Fed buying bonds, both both treasuries and, and agent, excuse me, uh, mortgage backed uh, agency bonds. Uh, this has ended. And the reason why it ended is due to the uh, very, very high rates of inflation that we're experiencing in the United States. This, these rates of inflation are are unlike anything we've seen in the last 40 years. And so in an effort to combat these very high rates of inflation, the U.S. has has abandoned that policy of QE. Uh, we are going to go over all of these topics and others in much greater depth in our newsletter. If this is of interest to you, for, to you uh, strongly encourage that you uh, read the letter um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for, for watching today. I uh, look forward to hearing from you and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.